Hey everybody, Marcos Viegas here in Los Angeles being joined with the trainer of Tyson Fury. 24 hours removed from his fight with Deontay Wilder. Ben, I know it's been a long night for you. How could you recap what you've gone through in the last 24 hours and, and the emotions and, and feelings that come with that? Yeah, look, obviously, obviously deep down I think that we all know it was Tyson won the fight, not taking anything away from Deontay. He uh, showed his fighting heart, his fighting spirit showed that his power is real um, but I think Tyson deserves a hell of a lot of credit for you know his mannerisms after the fight the way he dealt with it because um, it could have very easily turned into a riot there but um, I think he deserves a lot of credit for his professionalism in that situation disappointing situation should I say coming into when they read the judges scorecards how confident were you that it was going to go your guys' way? And when they did read it, what went on through your mind? Well, to be honest, at the end of the fight, very confidently, I looked at Paulie Malinaju, who I respect very highly. I said, what have you got? He said, 8-4, Tyson. I looked at Floyd Mayweather, I said, what have you got? And he laughed at me for even asking the question. And he pointed at Tyson, Tyson. Um, then before it got announced, I, I was told it was a draw. And by that point, I was thinking, this is, this is a Who had told you? Freddie. Oh, wow. Freddie getting some inside, inside info. Um, and I just thought, at that point, I thought, I didn't know what to think. I was so disappointed. I was a bit animated at first, to be honest with you. And then, like I said, Tyson's profession, professionalism, he wanted everybody to remain calm and, and not kick off because he knew what could have happened. And uh, like I said, I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. So we all calmed down and uh, listen, it's bitterly disappointing. No, bitterly disappointing. The mood in the locker room after, how was it? Because Tyson's conducting himself very, very professionally, saying, you know what, worse things have happened, he's just going to go and move on. But how was the mood after the fight? Well, like we say, at first it was bitterly disappointing. It was, we took it like a loss at first, to be honest, um, which you shouldn't have to do when, you, when, you got, when you've gone through what you've gone through for, for that amount of time, to come back to that. You know, people people make comebacks and, and win world titles, or they come back and eventually win world titles, or get a loss and then this, or they'll beat somebody that you know, a version of a world title. Titles, Tyson's come back and fought the most dangerous man in world boxing. Won the fight after the journey that he's been on. I mean, a, a, an absolute extreme from the lowest to the low to beating the most dangerous man in world boxing. To have it stole away from you like that. So obviously at first we took it as a loss. But once we went back to the locker room, like I say, Tyson wanted to, was very professional, wanted everybody to remain calm and, and you know, it, it sort of rubbed off on everybody else and everybody else calmed down eventually in the changing room. Going back to the two knockdowns, the first one you had mentioned that it was back of the head, Tyson wasn't really hurt then, but how did you see him from that point progressing to the 12th round? Yeah, I was very aware of the, of the shots to the back of the head throughout the fight. Those two just had an impact that, that took Tyson to the canvas. Um, then, you know, it was very, it was, a, it was a simple game plan, which I'm not going to go into because there could be a rematch, but it was a simple, simple game plan um, that, and Tyson just strayed away from it ever so slightly at times, which um, led to giving Deontay a chance to get back into the fight. And he showed that, you know, you give him, give him an inch and he'll take a mile. Him straying off from the plan, was that him kind of taunting at Wilder, kind of getting cute in there? Just, I knew that Tyson, Tyson could very, very comfortably beat Deontay Wilder. But if you take too many chances, he will exploit it. He will exploit it. If you give, like I say, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Um, and Tyson gave him an inch and he took a mile. Like I said, he just got a little bit greedy and a little bit complacent. That 12th round was something for the ages, honestly. You know, looking at it, I, I was just in disbelief. I was like, oh my God, how is he getting up? You living it in the corner, when you saw that punch, what went on through your mind? And then what were you telling Tyson on the corner as he's getting up and continuing that last round? Well, I told him before that he was making Deontay miss, but enjoying it a bit too much. He was making him miss, making him miss, making him miss, making him miss, making him miss three or four or five shots at a time. And I said to him, look, make him miss once or twice and tie him up. Don't, uh, don't give him that option. And that's what I mean by a little bit of complacency. He was enjoying it, making him miss and making him look, look silly. Um, so he knew what to do when he got back to his feet. But as it happened, over here, the commission feel like 
they should be the ones to take the look at the fighter. So I got up to have a look at my fighter and I've had four or five men trying to hold me down. I wanted to have a look at my fighter. Um, I know him better than anybody else. I ended up in a row in the corner. Um, by the time this had all finished, I turned around and Tyson come to his feet like something out of a movie. And, uh, so, so the commission wanted to stop the fight? No, the commission, no? the commission wanted to have a look at Tyson. Okay. But I was saying, I know Tyson better than anybody. I need to have a look at him. Yeah. And um, by the time this had finished and I turned around to have a, have a second look at him, he was uh, back to his feet and uh, enjoying himself again. <laughs> What were you thinking at that point when you saw him moving around like that? You know what? He's not, he, I can't tell you how many times he's shocked me and amazed me. He's, uh, he's definitely an uh, odd character. <laughs> Did he tell you how hard the power was of Wilder? I think he, he, he didn't really say anything about the power. I don't think he took too many shots to, uh, to be able to see. But I could see from the outside the speed and the commitment that Deontay puts into the shots. Uh, and the momentum he gets behind him for his reach and leverage. Um, a bit like a Tommy Hearns. He's that sort of puncher and uh, I could see it clearly. That he's, he's a dangerous man. Like I said, he uh, showed that his power was real. You give him an inch and he'll take a mile. And, uh, but Tyson showed his heart and overcome it. And uh, like I said, I, I fully believe and I think everybody knows that we deserve that win. Did you see the scorecards? The actual which rounds were given to which fighter and how it got all scored out? I've seen some of them, yeah. And your thoughts? Disgrace. To be honest, that, that judge, that judge, we was, a little, we was wary of it. Do you know what I mean? As you would be coming over uh, to uh, foreign soil. So I looked and went back years and years and years on every judge there. And that judge there usually has one judge agreeing with him. But that was, that was a joke and abysmal. Um, you know, I think, I think, like I said, Paul Malinaji, who I respect, Floyd Mayweather, Gennady Golovkin, Abel Sanchez, all where Tyson win the fight, Steve Farhood, Showtime, BT Sport, all where Tyson winning. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's disappointing. It's, it, it, it's put a massive dampener on the, 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 the you know, icing. Well, it kind of reminds me of the Canelo Golovkin situation where. It seemed the whole boxing public had thought Golovkin won the first fight. And everybody's wondering, how is it that millions of people can see a fight going one way so clearly for a fighter and three judges can't? Yeah, but for me, it was, it was a clearer decision for me than even that, you know. Um, and I think, like everybody else, there was a, a bit more of a mixed opinion on that, that situation, on that fight. I think with this fight, it was very, very clear. Um, it's just put a dampener on the ice and on the cake, like I say. You guys have nothing to be ashamed about because I think, regardless, he came out a winner uh, given what he did uh, with those two knockdowns and the way that he boxed as well. So job well done on your end for training him and preparing him for this fight. Ben, thank you so much. Appreciate talking. As always, Ben Davison here with Marcos Villegas in Los Angeles for Fight Hub.